Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, hope you're getting your week off to a good start. All right, so Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness was released over the weekend, unless you were able to, you know, unless you saw it earlier last week. Um, but I did see it over the weekend. And, um, well, <laughs> I see that there's a lot of kind, the, I have seen a lot of like back and forth, um, well, you know, different ends of the spectrum comments and reactions to the movie, which is expected, of course. But um, I just wanted to go ahead and share my general thoughts on the film. So I really, I did like the first Doctor Strange movie. Um, I feel like it was a long time ago that it came out. Um, but of course, we've seen him in, you know, Infinity War and Game. And um, I really liked him in those movies. Um, I think his character is pretty interesting. And I think Benedict Cumberbatch does a great job in his role as, as the character as well. Um, so it's cool to see him in another solo film of his own and bringing in the multiverse of the Marvel, you know, uh, cinematic universe. And of course, we kind of got introduced to that with Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, sorry, Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> All those movies have such, you know, their names are so similar. No Way Home. Um, we got introduced to that with, you know, that movie, but it was very different from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I would not try to compare the two just because they are multiverse movies. Um, of course, there's similarities, like seeing different versions of Doctor Strange and then seeing all of the live action versions that we have seen so far of Spider-Man, but it was still really different in my opinion. I don't think they're really comparable just because they are multiverse movies. Um, but, it, I mean, with Doctor, I guess, with Sam, Ra Sam Raimi being the director, it stands out from other Marvel movies visually and as far as um, like directorial style. So I, you know, I, I like Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. I think he's a good director. I think he really, you know, I see his signature style on this movie and he, that includes like the horror elements. Um, even in Spider-Man 2, when Dr. Ock um, kind of takes over in the surgical, the um, the operation room, that has a lot of horror elements in it. But this movie is like, the whole movie is filled with a lot of horror elements. And I kind of was surprised by that. I mean, obviously he, he likes those kinds of things, Sam Raimi, but I didn't expect it to be like the entire movie. <laughs> but dealing with, you know, okay, Doctor Strange is a sorcerer, like the Scarlet Witch is a, all these different powers that they have um, that are, you know, otherworldly and um, I guess paranormal. Um, the horror, I mean, it, it worked with this movie because of what their characters are and what they can do. Now, I will just say, again, Bernard Cumberbatch did a great job as in his character. Um, I will say that there is a lot of action, um, a lot of fight scenes, a lot of action scenes. Um, it was really cool to see the different, um, some of these different universes and what they look like and how, how they're different. Um, Scarlet Witch, she was a very threatening villain in this movie. And I was really interested to see how she was going to kind of be, be the villain in this film, but you know, if you watched WandaVision, the series, you can kind of see how she's going down that path and how it's leading up to that. And that show definitely played a big part leading up to this movie, which is what it was supposed to do. Um, and watching the film, you can see, um, you know, flashbacks to that show or Easter eggs from it. Um, it definitely, you definitely see how it goes from that move from that show, how for her character to this movie. Um, so she was definitely a threatening villain, especially I think compared to a lot of Marvel villains. Um, I think Killmonger and Black Panther was probably um, one of the best MCU villains that we have seen. Um, and Scarlet Witch, she's been part of the Avengers. I mean, she kind of started out against the Avengers then she became part of the Avengers. And now she's kind of like a full on the Scarlet Witch. We've seen her character arc. And now she was really like, she felt like what she was doing was, she's one of those villains where she felt like she was doing, what she was doing wasn't wrong because of the reasons that she was doing it. Um, you know, wanting to be with her sons that she created. Um, but she's going to extreme measures 
to try to accomplish, um, you know, being a mother to the children that she created in WandaVision. So it's just the way that she's going about it that makes her a villain. But she is extremely, extremely powerful. And I saw a tweet um, that said, like, I think the debate over, you know, who's the strongest Avenger has been put to rest now because I, and I definitely agree with that. I think Scarlet Witch is for sure the strongest Avenger power wise. Um, I think she could take on any of, obviously a lot of them don't have like powers. Um, Thor, Doctor Strange. Okay. But like Scarlet Witch, she, oh my God, she, she had no mercy for people, for anyone in this movie. She was, yeah. I see some, I mean, uh, <laughs> in line with that, I have seen some people saying like, oh, it was really graphic and violent. And there is graphic and, you know, um, visually graphic things in this movie and violence. But um, I think people are just kind of pointing it out in this movie because other Marvel movies sugarcoat it. Um, and this movie kind of didn't. Um, obviously in some ways, because it's still, it's not like a rated R movie. But um adding the horror elements and like some of the more graphic um violence i think it could be i think it could have it could have been i don't know what they cut out of the film um it's only like two it's a pretty short movie it's not long but it kind of feels long sometimes in some ways if that makes sense if i, if I remember correctly i believe the runtime was around two hours so it's not long um but I felt like watching the movie, it felt longer than it was. Not necessarily in a bad way. It just, it didn't feel like it, um, like we just ran through the movie and all of a sudden it was over. It didn't feel that way. I do see how, um, you know, if it was like two and a half hours, I think it would feel pretty long. I guess it depends on how much like story or things were taken out. But again, there's a lot of action and like, um, it didn't feel short or like it just ran through the movie and it was over. It didn't feel that way. But I could see how it could be a rated R movie if parts that they cut out still had a lot of that horror, those horror elements and violence um, in them. So I could see how it, you know, it could pass as a rated R movie in some ways. I didn't really, um, it was interesting to see if you, again, the series, the Disney Plus series are, um, you know, part of the live action cinematic series uh movies now so it was really interesting to see the what if series also um you know how that played a role in this movie too because in the what if series we see different versions of these characters and um you know dr strange the dr strange episode i think of the what if was one of the best episodes and you also get kind of you know some of the you see some of that those versions of doctor strange in this movie too so it's really cool how they were how they are doing that now with the series and the movies with marvel um i think they have done a good job of combining the series and the movies and kind of seeing how like i said wandavision led up to this for her character um as far as one wanda scarlet witch the only way <laughs> I could see them redeeming her character so that she's not just a full-on villain now in the MCU is if they use a different version of her from another universe. Um, because we see in this movie, there's all these, you know, universes with different versions of Doctor Strange, different versions of Wanda, all these people, um, you know. So, I mean that's her her purpose in the movie her goal is to be in a universe where she can be with the sons that okay in in this in their main universe she created them but you find out that these kids spoiler alert they do exist as her sons in other universes as wanda's sons so they do this thing called dream walking where they um you know wanda and dr strange does it too where they like couldn't they their spirit takes over the body of another version of themselves in the other universe and kind of lives through it, but it's temporary. They can't stay like that. So Wanda kind of tries to do that 
to temporarily be with these boys, but at the same time, she's like acting as a villain too um, against other, where Dr. Strange is trying to, um, he's in these other universes as well. And he's traveling to these other, other universes, trying to get a book that's supposed to be able to stop her. And um, the spells in there are supposed to be able to stop her from what she's doing. She's using a magic called the dark hold and he's trying to get the book that's like the opposite of that. And he has to go to these other universes to get it. Um, so <laughs> it's, uh, and you know, the other, the new character, America Chavez, she can travel between these multiverses. And so there's, you know, Wanda wants to use, take her power. So that way she can travel between multiverses instead of just, you know, asking America, can you put me in this universe and like, I can live out my life or no, but she wants to have that power for hers. And she's kind of getting this mindset where she wants to just have all of that power because she can control it. And America Chavez is like not, she can't, she hasn't really learned how to control it a hundred percent. So she's definitely a threatening villain. That's all I'm going to say. I don't see how they're going to redeem her character unless they use a different version of her from another universe or they have some kind of other explanation um, for why she's not going to be the villain anymore. But in this movie, she's like full on, I mean, she's just focused on her one goal. And it's like, I think it'd be hard to redeem her if it was the ver this version of Wanda and not another one from another multiverse, from another universe. Um, but it was, it was an overall interesting movie. It was entertaining. Uh, I, you know, wasn't boring or anything like that. Um, rewatchability. I don't know if it has a really high rewatchability factor for me personally. I wouldn't mind watching it again, like when it comes out on Disney Plus. Um, but I don't think I'll go back to the theater to see it again. Um, I mean, if people are complaining about, you know, that it's not kid friendly, a lot of it's not. Um, I don't think every superhero movie or comic book movie has to be a hundred percent oriented towards kids there. It's okay for some of these movies to have adult, um, audiences in mind. Some of the elements in this movie are visually scary. Um, so I can understand like, it, but this, <laughs> it's fitting. That's what you kind of expect with this character. I Scarlet, Witch. maybe not. I mean, I was surprised by how much of that there was in this movie, but I don't think it's fair for people to complain. Not every single comic book movie is going to be like start to finish, you know, 100% kid friendly. And I think, you know, Sam Raimi, again, visually and directorially speaking, it stands out. Um, one thing I will say, Danny Elfman did the score for this movie. And um, I think I knew that he was going to do the score a while back, but I had forgotten about it, you know, since between then and between the movie coming out now. So I kind of have forgotten about that, that Danny Elfman was doing the score. But very early on in the movie, um, I could, I felt like it was Danny Elfman who did the score, like I could tell. And um, the reason I thought it might've been him was because it sounded so similar to a lot of, not the whole, not like the whole thing, not as a whole, but like there's so many parts of the score that sounded very similar to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. And don't get me wrong, I think the score in those movies is great. I think the Spider-Man's theme song, like I think that is definitely some of Danny Elfman's best work. Um, but it sounds so reminiscent of that score. And I mean, as a composer, any kind of artist, composer, filmmaker, um, painter, whether you draw, dance, act, whatever. Obviously, as an artist, there, you, like, you want there to be some kind of like personal stamp or signature style that is recognizable as that person's work. However, I just, it's kind of like you don't, but you don't want it to be exactly the same. So having a signature style, I think that's important as an whatever kind of artist you are, 
or whatever kind of line of, you know, you want to have your personal stamp on it. But it's so similar. Like, it's just, it sounds so much the same, a lot of it. And I don't know if you guys have watched it in theaters um, already, but I don't know about anybody else's showing, but the score for my viewing was extremely loud. I don't know if it was the theater I was at. I don't know if it's the actual movie and that's how they mixed it, the sound mixing. It is extremely, it was so, so, so loud. And I was not in an XD or like special type of viewing. Like, okay, at, my, at the theaters here, they have like XD at some of them, which is a ginormous screen you know, tons of rows of seating, tons of speakers. It's supposed to, it, it, it's like an ultra experience, right? I was just in a regular viewing and it was extremely loud, <laughs> the music. And it was, yes, movie theaters are loud, but like it was noticeably very, very loud for the score. Tell me if you had the same experience. Cause I don't know if it's just like the movie in general or if it was the theater I was at, I don't know but it was noticeably so much loud, like extremely loud. Um, not compl- it was just, it was shocking. <laughs> it was shockingly loud. I don't know. It's weird. Um, it was noticeable though. So I don't know if that's how they mix the movie or what, but again, I just wish that like <sighs> the score, I wish it wasn't so reminiscent of like the Spider-Man movies and I think he also did some of the Hulk movies too um, that I've heard people compare. Like a lot of, he uses a lot of the same sounds, which is fine, but like it sounds so much the same. And then when he took over for Justice League and did a, I hated the score in the theatrical version. It also kind of reminded me of that too, because that score reminded a lot of people of some of his older movies. Um, So I don't know. It was just noticeable in the way that but the spider-man the old spider-man movies their score was good but you don't want it to keep you don't want a bunch of these different movies with different characters to sound exactly the same or like extremely similar you want them to have a different like do something different you know um there would good there were there were good moments in the score though that i appreciated but overall it was a good movie it was entertaining it was definitely um you know different from other marvel movies um, it wasn't as cookie cutter as a lot of these, a lot of the Marvel movies are. And I don't want really to say that in a bad thing. I just say, you know, we all kind of are familiar with the Marvel formula by now and works for them. I think bringing in, you know, a director that hasn't made one of their, well, he made the Spider-Man movies, but I mean, like, um, you know, aside from Sony, just being at Marvel, um, Sam Raimi hasn't done one of the movies that we have had since Iron Man. So I think bringing him in kind of gave a fresh, you know, perspective and taste to the MCU. And I appreciate that. So let me know your overall thoughts on the movie. I thought it was good. Um, Again, I'm looking forward to see where they go, where Scarlet Witch's character goes from here and looking forward to seeing more of how they bring in the multiverse to the MCU. So um, thanks for listening to my rambling. Um, Check out the links in the description and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and or subscribe if you feel so inclined and we'll see you guys soon.